Folks, welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to answer your question, how to buy vacant land in California. You're going to love this lesson. There's going to be plenty of it. It's a land of abundance, that's for sure. So everyone wants to own a property. Some people want to start a little small one to get started. Other people want to own large properties. There's plenty for everyone here. And this is a way to make yourself some money. But you're going to have to learn a little bit about the land. And you're going to learn how to buy the land. You need to buy it right. If you can't buy it right, don't buy it. Okay? So most people have this to say. Buy and own property because they're not making any more of it. So remember that. They're not making any more of it. Now, what does that mean to people? Well, it really means this. They think that the value will always be there and maybe it'll even increase in value. I don't know if either one of those things are going to happen, but a guy by the name of Will Rogers made that statement famous. He said, buy land. They ain't making any more of that stuff. Well, if you think about it, land does become more valuable, but when there's too much of it, it doesn't have much value. So a place like California, you've got a lot of mountains, and they've got a lot of places they can't build, and they've got a lot of people, about 40 million of them. So what am I going to try to do on this lesson? I'm going to try to answer your question, how to buy vacant land in California. So open up your mind to some new ideas. Now, there's plenty of land in California. There's plenty of it. Now, Los Angeles is pretty crowded, and there's hundreds of developers there trying to buy every piece of land they can. Okay, but throughout the state, whether it's in the San Joaquin Valley or the Sacramento Valley or in the mountains, Developers are trying to develop California because many people move there. All right. So there's always going to be many advertisements for vacant land and for residential land. I prefer residential land because I can buy it and then relatively soon I can sell it. But the most important part is I can buy it right because I buy at tax defaulted auctions. All right. Now, sometimes large parcels of land can be cut into smaller parts. That's called subdivisions. All right. So thousands of developers will look for those properties and they'll divide them up into smaller pieces. All right. Then they ask the brokers to go ahead and sell them. So you can find those in the newspaper. You can find them on the electronic sites. Uh, you can find mouth to mouth. I mean, people are just talking about real estate all the time in the state of California. So there's going to be plenty of it. Now, I'm partial to one part of the market. That part of the market is tax defaulted property because I can get properties very close to wholesale or less. In other words, I'm going to buy a property 60, 70, 80 percent discount. All right. Now, there's going to be plenty for everybody. Now, I could point out literally thousands of acres that are available, but you've got to think, what are you going to do with the property? So if you don't have an exit strategy, then I'm going to suggest you not get involved in vacant land or residential land. You've got to know what your exit strategy. Now, the Developers are constantly advertising. So if you look at those ads, you'll be able to tell pricing right away. You'll see in foreclosure auctions, many times vacant land or even residential land will come back onto the market because the people didn't know what to do with it. So they lose the property to the bank because they couldn't make the payments. So there's going to be plenty. You're not going to be involved in a business that there isn't plenty of it. As a matter of fact, most auctions, 25% of the auction will be vacant land or residential property. Now, there's other places to look. What would the other places be? Well, you could look on Zillow. You could look on the multiple listing. You could look on eBay. You're getting the idea. You could look on Craigslist. So there's plenty of places to find these properties. I prefer to find them at the tax default deduction. Why? Because I can get these huge discounts of 60, 70, and 80%. All right. Now, if you want a large track, what are you going to do with that large track? Do you know how to subdivide that property into smaller parcels. If you don't, you'll have to hire somebody. That means you need not only money to buy, but you need money to go and get the, the subdivision approved and get all the parcel management. All right, so small parcels sell for much more money and they're even more affordable than the big parcels. Why? Because the average guy doesn't know how to do all the subdividing and all the rest of it. All right, you will not have trouble finding vacant open land and you'll no, have no trouble finding residential lots. All of the auctions will have many, many properties that are for sale. If you don't have an exit strategy, I'm going to tell you right now. All right, so what is this episode all about? It's how to buy vacant land in California. Well, listen, anybody can buy. It's selling. It's the trick to make money. So know what you're going to sell it for before you even think about buying it. All right, now vacant land is popular 
as residential lots are popular because they require no maintenance. In other words, if you keep the grass cut on a reg residential lot, that's about all you have to do. All right, you might want to have liability insurance in case someone falls down or something happens. The point is, if you buy large acreage, there's not going to be a lot of work to do. Whereas if you buy property, in other words, fixer upper homes or multiple homes or whatever, you're going to have the responsibility of security, making sure that, that the heat and light are paid, make, make sure that it's being fixed up, make sure something happening, that squatters don't get in there. So there's a whole different responsibility level in vacant land or residential land than there is when you're buying fixer upper properties and things like that. Much different business. Okay. Now, where are you going to find the bargains? Well, I already mentioned a whole bunch of places to buy, find those bargains, but I go back again and again to the auctions. Okay. Now you can go to foreclosure auctions that are done by the banks and find them there. I prefer to go to the county level and buy at the tax defaulted auction because I want to get that huge discount, 60, 70, 80% discount. That gives me margin between the price I bought it and what the value is. And so now that's where I'm going to make my money on that margin. Okay. Now this is a part-time business. You don't want to be doing this full-time. Keep your job, keep your paychecks coming in so that you're not worried because you can get out of, you run out of money quickly with real estate. It goes away quickly. So if you're just getting started and you're a little late in life, this is going to be a way. And I'll show you ways to make money before we finish the video. You make money on vacant land and residential land. And I'll put a residential land example in and you'll get to see that that this works and it works regularly, but you have to think about your exit strategy before you buy it. Don't think about it afterwards. You want to think about it before because you don't want to buy a large piece of vacant land that nobody's going to be even near it for the next 50 miles. All right. So that means you have to look around. You're going to have to think about how much money you're going to spend. What about how you're going to handle that? Are you going to ask your, your family to come and help you with it? Are you going to find brokers to help you with it? Are you going to subdivide it? You need to think about those things before you get involved in the actual purchase of it. Now, you're not alone if you're just getting started. Now, I'm going to show you an example. When I finish this lesson, I'll show you an example of buying some vacant land and then being able to sell it a short time later and may be able to make two, 300% profit. Okay. So buy vacant land. You could have huge profits, but you have to know what you're going to do it. You know, have to know exactly how you're going to handle it during that whole process. All right. So if you don't have a lot of money today, and you're starting out late. That doesn't mean you have to give up. Don't give up. Start looking at vacant land because you can spend a small amount of money, small amount of money and have a large profit in it especially if you do that at tax defaulted auctions. All right. So I'm partial to those as you already know. All right. So this is just a step-by-step -step process. And if you'll follow it, when I show you the example, you see A, B, C, D. And if you'll do that in that one, two, three fashion, you're not going to have any trouble. So I'll show you a video on that. My name is Renee Goche from Surrey, BC. In October, I went to Los Angeles County tax deed sale, bought five properties for roughly $85,000. They are vacant lots. One is in Malibu, four in downtown LA. Gorgeous properties. Their value, tax assessed value, is just over $1 million. I did this after taking Ted's course in under 90 days. Thanks, Ted. All right, so now getting back to California, we've got a large state, we've got a large population, okay? They live in the cities, they live over in the San Joaquin and Sacramento Valleys, they live in the coastal range, okay? Plenty of places to buy residential vacant land. So if you want vacant land in the residential areas, you'll find that just on the edge of the cities, there's going to be a lot of land that's zoned residential, all right? When they zone it residential, the price goes sky highs. So keep that in the back of your mind. But if you could buy that from the tax collector, that could make a whole difference in your life. Now, in California, they have 58 different counties. All of those counties will have tax auctions. Now, I don't make the rules at the auction. The legislature makes the rules. And what the legislature simply says is if you don't pay tax, we're going to tell the county treasurer and the county tax collector to confiscate your property. So the legislature makes the rule. They tell the county to levy a tax. Then if they levy the tax, they're going to try to collect it. And if they can't collect it, they're going to confiscate the property. Wouldn't it be nice if you could get some of those confiscated properties for 10 and 20 cents on the dollar? That would mean 
that you'd have a whole bunch of margin between the selling price and what you purchase it for. Now, tax defaulted properties are selling at huge discounts. So you don't want to uh, try to outbid anybody. You want to buy them at 60, 70, 80% discounts, and they will be all across the state of California. Won't matter whether it's in Bakersfield in, uh, in Southern California or whether it's up in Northern California in Sacramento or one of the one of the counties in the Sacramento Valley. The point is they'll have plenty of these tax defaulted auction. Now, I've been involved in tax liens and deeds for over 30 years. Why did I get involved in that business? There's nothing wrong with foreclosures. There's nothing wrong with the retail market. I just want to be able to buy at the lowest possible price. And when I buy at that low possible price from the tax collector, they're going to take the mortgage off the property. In other words, the mortgage will be deleted. Now, folks, when I give you this information, I'm not an attorney. I'm not a CPA. I'm not a broker. I'm just a prepared auction buyer. And you can buy these properties, whether it's vacant residential land or vacant land period, you can buy these at tax defaulted auction. I've been doing it for 30 years and I can teach you how to do it. All right. I don't make the laws. The legislature makes the laws. And once they make that law, the county must fulfill the law and they confiscate these properties, not one or two. They're going to confiscate them by the thousands. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, a place like Los Angeles, annually, they will confiscate one to 2,000 properties, which they will sell for back taxes. And that's one county of the 58 counties in Los Angeles. Now think about that. One to 2,000 properties are going to sell at just the back taxes for their starting bid. Approximately 25% of all the properties at auction will be vacant land and they'll be sold at very close to the back taxes. Now places like Bakersfield and the open country over in the in the San Joaquin Valley, there's mammoth vacant land that can be purchased. Thousands of acres can be purchased. What are you going to do with it? Don't just buy it for the sake of own, owning that open land. Now, you can see on the left, they put the land to work. That costs money. If you buy that land on the right, do you have the way to put it to work? You need to think about that before you do it. All right. So there's plenty of market for everybody. All the auctions are listed in the newspaper and on the county website. All right. Now, my name is Ted Thomas. I'm going to finish up this video, but before I go, I want you to know right below me, there's a free gift for you. I'm Ted Thomas.